Hi. In this video, you'll see how children in the Renaissance could improvise counterpoint adding a line to a chant cantus firmus. It's hard for us to imagine how they learned to do that. If you've seen the excellent Introduction to Singing Upon the Book by EarlyMusicSources.com, you know that it was by following rules, rules, rules. That sounds sort of forbidding, but now I'm going to show you an easy step-by-step -step method for learning this. It's really not rocket science, and it's even fun because you'll get to imitate animals. Adrian petit Coquelicot, who claimed to have studied with Josquin, gives us some idea of how kids learn to sing against a chant. He said that Josquin's method was first to teach them the kinds of intervals. By this, I think he meant what we call the vertical intervals between the parts. After all, the kids could already read a melody that was written down. What's new is seeing or hearing or otherwise imagining the way two parts work together. You can't just sing any nice line against a chant melody, so lots of treatises show just which vertical intervals are allowed. These are called the consonances. The unison, the third, the fifth, the sixth, the octave, and their compounds. For instance, above a cantus firmus note of C, you can sing that same C for a unison, La, or E for a third, La, or G for a fifth, La, or A for a sixth, La, or another C for an octave, La. You can also sing any of those notes in a higher register. Now, these intervals you really have to memorize. At first, according to Coquelicot, the kids wrote the notes they were to sing on an erasable tablet. And that's why my good colleague Ilam Rotem has made these nice visual aids that you see. But pretty soon the kids could just visualize their notes in their mind, which is why this practice is also called contrapunto a la mente, which means counterpoint in the mind. All you see is the cantus firmus. Adriano Banchieri wrote a comical little piece using this phrase in the title, contrapunto bestiale a la mente, which means improvised animal counterpoint. In this piece, four animals improvise against the cantus firmus in the bass. Each animal has a different characteristic note or little pattern of notes. First, we'll look at each animal's characteristic sounding music as if it was alone against the chant, and then we'll see how Banchieri put them together. The dog has the simplest job, or you could say he has the least training. He only has one note to sing. La, bow wow. He only barks this note when it's consonant. He looks ahead and asks himself, is my note going to be consonant or dissonant with the note coming up in the cantus firmus? Suppose you were doing this on some cantus firmus that went like this. C, A, D, F, E, C. So right away the dog knows that he can bark against the first note. Bow wow! And above the second, because he knows a tenth is consonant. Bow wow! But not the third, because it's a seventh. Bow wow! And that's dissonant. And finally, the dog looks ahead and sees that he can bark over F, E, and C. Bow wow! Bow wow! If you want to practice being the dog, you can take any tune to use as a cantus firmus, choose some note to bark on, and write where you can sing and where you can't. 
pretty soon you'll be able to do it without writing it down. The owl, like the dog, only hoots one note at a time, but he has a choice to sing G or A, so there are two possibilities to choose from, so his job is a little harder. Over the first note, the owl could sing either G, da, or A, da. So over the first note, he chooses G, da. Over the second note, he can't sing G again, so he sings A. So he goes on like this. Da, 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 da. Each time he evaluates and he sings. The cuckoo and the cat have the hardest jobs because they sing melodies with more notes. The cuckoo's song has two notes, E and C, in quick rhythm. Both of these notes have to be consonant with cantus firmus notes. Over the first cantus firmus note, they are. But the cuckoo is an enthusiastic singer and wants to repeat immediately, which takes her across the bar line where the cantus firmus notes change. If she sings again immediately, the C of her song is consonant with the A, and the two notes follow the rules of voice leading, making parallel tenths vertically. Which is good. It's very exciting, actually, when the song stays the same and the cantus firmus changes. The cuckoo can't sing again over the D and the F, but she can over the E. But this time, if she wants to go across the bar line, she has a problem. The E and the C are both consonant, but they make parallel octaves, which is forbidden. Finally, the cat. Cats are independent and do what they want, so the cat doesn't even have a clearly defined melody, as you'll hear when we play the piece. Because it's capricious, the cat has to think fast on her feet, since she's making up a new tune on the spot over each cantus firmus note. If you want to practice this technique, I recommend that you start as a dog with only one note, move on to the owl, and then the cuckoo. And you can try inventing musical sounds from other animals. You could make up a sound for a chicken, or a camel, or you could borrow Mendelssohn's donkey from the Midsummer Night's Dream Overture. Then find some tune to use as a cantus firmus in even values and get started. Now let's consider what would happen if all four animals sang at once. One danger is that one animal might choose to sing a sixth above a given note and another animal might choose to sing a fifth on the same cantus firmus note. Remember the owl who could choose a fifth or a sixth above the first note? Well imagine if there were two owls and one chose G and the other chose A. Here's this cantus firmus note, and here's the G, and here's the A. Those two notes would make a second, which is a dissonance, and which is unacceptable. In his treatise, the Cartella, Banchieri offers a simple solution. Nobody should ever sing a sixth. So if you do this in a group, you should follow that advice. Now let's look at what Banchieri actually did. You might notice 
that the dog barks every other measure and the owl always hoots along with the dog but systematically alternates G's and A's. How is that possible? Well, the answer is Bankieri cheated. He invented a cantus firmus that would allow that to happen. In church, the kids had to deal with whatever chant was to be sung that day, so that kind of regularity would really never have happened. So if you want to know more about this practice, we've put many links in the notes.